Hi, my Louise. Welcome to Community Living with your co my Lebo. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe. And if you're stopping back by and continuously supporting the channel, you know the jingle by now. So sing along with us. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So today we're discussing a very important financial topic, which I personally don't like. <laughs> uh, Tash is just going to take us through it and really make our lives easy so that we understand what we need to do when it comes to all things tech. So she's going to introduce herself and just let us know a bit about who she is, what she does, and also give us further insight as we go on related to freelancing, businesses, and as I said, all things tech. Thank you for having me. So my name is Natasha Lord mm -hmm. and I'm a tax specialist. Mm -hmm. I essentially help people with preparing for their taxes, mm -hmm. advising them with their taxes, and then ultimately filing their taxes. Mm -hmm. um, and so our passion is to help people understand the importance of their taxes and, and that's how we essentially do our work and help people. What's the name of your business? So Lord Business Solutions. Lord Business Solutions. Yes, I am the director of Lord Business Solutions, mm -hmm. founder of Lord Business Solutions. And um, yeah, we're a multinational firm. We're based both here in South Africa um, with branches in Johannesburg, Cape Town and the Northwest mm -hmm. and also in Zambia. Okay. Fantastic. What is the biggest fine that you know of that SARS has imposed on someone? On someone, there's so many, but I'll speak on my client, the one client. I did a lot of audit cases, so it gets really juicy up there. Um, and the <laughs> biggest one that I got mm -hmm. was about 35 million. In what penalties. did the person do? <laughs> did they just not pay tax since they were like 18 or...? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite a lot. It was 35 million, 40 million, um, mm. and the total tax bill came up to 70 million. Mm. It was quite interesting, something. guys. So I think this episode, <laughs> that's why we really need this, because a lot of us don't understand tax laws. So I think Tesh will just take us through the most important parts of tax. Who needs to pay tax? Mm. You know, this guy that <laughs> owns SARS 35 million <laughs> definitely needed to pay tax yeah. at some point. So if you mm. can just take us through who needs to pay tax. Any person who is generating an income in South Africa mm -hmm. um, needs to pay tax okay. in terms of their threshold. So for mm -hmm. it, it slides on a scale in terms of how old you are. Okay. But essentially, the minimum amount for most people who are under the age of 65 and 75, you're not going to have to pay tax if you earn less than 147000 okay. So from there, you're fine. Um, mm -hmm. But if, for instance, you want to claim a rebate, so in terms of your um, medical aid maybe, mm -hmm. or you have a retirement annuity, it's not necessarily that you need to pay tax, but you need to file your file tax, tax returns, returns to, get to get the refund. So mm -hmm. SARS just now has um, refunded the most in its entire history mm -hmm. um, to taxpayers, which was a very good year. You've seen auto assessments and all of that. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, they've also collected the most that they've ever collected. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Meaning that people that are owed a couple of rents for, yeah. not, getting, for not collecting their tax rebates? Or is, yeah, is that I mean, the case? A lot of people, they leave chips on the table mm -hmm. I mean you probably could get a rebate and maybe you don't but mm -hmm. SARS is also getting increasingly strict I think a lot of mm -hmm. people have felt that why am I getting an SMS from SARS this is not like, never happened to mm -hmm. me you know that mm -hmm. type of thing so SARS is clamping down they're doing a lot more final demands they're doing a lot more debiting mm -hmm. off of bank accounts um, they're doing a lot more investigations mm -hmm. a lot more audits okay. um, so that it justifies their process in terms of yes we are refunding mm -hmm. and we are taking care of our taxpayers mm -hmm. but they're also they've decreased tax rates they haven't increased mm -hmm. tax rates even though we need more state income because it accounts for 90 percent of state income mm -hmm. so what they've done is that they've rather become more um, proficient in collecting tax mm. rands. Okay. And so we saw they collected about 2 trillion rands Last in year. tax, yeah, which was 10 mm -hmm. billion more than what they had anticipated or budgeted for. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think we all made fun of the fact that it is the most efficient government yes, <laughs> department <laughs> in this country, but they really do do their job when it comes to collecting tax. How should freelancers go about paying their taxes? Because as you know, as a freelancer, one month you're getting 10000 
thousand, the next is fifty thousand, and the third month you're getting zero rent. So how do you actually go about planning for your taxes or even paying it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So freelancers will automatically be provisional taxpayers mm -hmm. just because they're not receiving their income in a steady fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, they will be responsible for filing their taxes, mm -hmm. three tax returns twice a year. Um, um, okay, three tax returns twice, twice a, a year. How yeah. does that make sense? <laughs> <play? laughs> so Please break it down. No problem. It's two <laughs> provisional tax returns, mm -hmm. and you pay that. You do submit them, and if need be, pay that every mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. And then you have your annual tax return, mm -hmm. which you then do. Like everybody, when everybody is doing their annual tax return, you also need to do the same. Actually, sometimes no. You're mm -hmm. doing so it yours instead. might be offset a yeah. bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you you will have the same annual tax return, mm -hmm. but you'll have it in Feb, and then you'll have another return in August and another return in Feb. So it's two tax returns in, in Feb, Feb. Okay. and one, one in, in August. August. Mm -hmm. So that's three tax returns twice a year. Mm -hmm. And in terms of that really depends on if the freelancer is um, ha has a registered company with CIPC mm -hmm. or if the freelancer is doing it in their personal capacity as a sole proprietor mm -hmm. um, and then we start looking at the calculations mm -hmm. and different ways to optimize and so the best thing I would always say is a tax consultation because it talks about your industry mm -hmm. can you apply for certain types of tax deductions mm -hmm. uh, for certain types of tax incentives are you mm -hmm. allowed to do that if you are are allowed to do that then we start to look at a plan for you mm -hmm. but it's yes it's industry specific but it's understanding how the freelancer works and what's most um beneficial, beneficial for them for that, tax yeah. wise tax okay wise, yeah. yeah understood okay and then under which conditions might it be beneficial for someone who's a freelancer to start considering registering a company and operating their freelancing gigs as a company as opposed to like just maybe a sole proprietor mm -hmm. or just them as an individual mm -hmm. uh that will depend on their business so mm -hmm. for instance some clients they would want them to have a registered company on mm -hmm. a database mm -hmm. so it depends on that internal dynamic a okay. second thing depends on is the numbers will you pay more tax as an individual or as a company and that will mm -hmm. depend on your unique business situation, situation. Mm -hmm. so sometimes we find that if you're turning over um, you know less than say 200,000 not mm -hmm. not turning over but you, you've got a profit of less than that mm -hmm. your tax rate will be as an individual 18% mm -hmm. versus as a company 27% mm -hmm. so although people might think that your it's company always, is yeah, always beneficial it's sometimes not yes because I know that um, I recently found out that with SMEs if you are, if you're a director of um, the company and you don't have directorship in other companies you can pay between zero and seven percent mm -hmm. even so yeah. yeah it's a sliding scale so that one mm -hmm. you've got if you do qualify for SBC tax rates mm -hmm. then zero to seven percent but again if you qualify for turnover tax rates that's between zero and three percent so mm -hmm. they're different um, tax rates and it's also about saying okay does three percent work out rand value mm -hmm. more than a seven percent on profit mm. because it's 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 different ways that the rates is applied. Mm. So we take all of that. I mean, I can't even just say if you just tell me your situation and and I have to actually put it down on yeah, paper, on paper and, and do the calculations. And, and then it's clear and it's yeah. obvious for both of us that oh, okay, yeah, this works out. Or you might decide, you know what? Actually, I want to operate. Um, in a company because I, I have to, you mm -hmm. know, like even if the tax rate is yes, yes. more, it's lower, I have, but to, yeah, yeah. I have to because of the client, the type of clientele as you mentioned before. The next one is about people that are pursuing side hustles, mm -hmm. so additional income, be it property, Uber, um, what I'm doing, which is like making yes. money online and stuff like that. So how do they then go about planning for this additional income that they're receiving? Because IRP5, they probably can find that from their companies yes. and so forth and it's easy to file that type of tax mm -hmm. but with additional income how do you, how do they then go about dealing with that and do they have to declare it actually that's another important question it is and when do they start declaring it from round one mm -hmm. for this one it is actually from like zero it's not from mm -hmm. um it's not like a, a different type of income so the, like with the, the the limits right so if you mm -hmm fall within the limits 
totally collectively you don't have to file your taxes mm -hmm. and you'll be able to SMS and see if you have to file your taxes mm -hmm. but that'll be based off of employer information not mm -hmm. based off employer information plus side hustle mm -hmm. because the only thing SARS has is the employer information mm -hmm. because the employer is legally um, bound they, they're, they're liable to file your taxes mm -hmm. on your behalf mm -hmm. but then when you step outside of that space of being mm -hmm. employed into mm -hmm. self-employment not only do you have more time and you know sometimes more money and more autonomy you yes. also have more responsibility yeah. and part of that is then filing your taxes mm -hmm. okay. so when you're filing your taxes the biggest thing is to keep a record of your income mm -hmm. and keep a record of your company expense or your expenses that you had to incur to do the mm -hmm. service to do the service yeah okay and so there are a lot of templates we also have them on our website that just mm -hmm. help people do that themselves okay. or else you can just come to an accountant mm -hmm. at the end of the year mm -hmm. give bank statements and they will say okay for the next year please make sure you keep these types of invoices and mm -hmm. please keep this mm -hmm. make sure you do this or even better is if you have the consultation and then you prep for mm -hmm. the whole year prep for the whole year yeah, yeah but very it's important exactly so if you do your um vision board and all those things at the beginning of the year yeah. also have your tax plan, plan. or tax uh, outlook for the year um, jotted down somewhere and you know you know you have so a what plan it's what to do Okay, I think you've already explained the provisional tax one and who pays it, mm -hmm. right? Um, does it apply to companies, the yes. provisional tax? Yes. Okay, can we uh, maybe discuss it from a company, company perspective? perspective? Yeah. So when you are operating like a company or freelancers mm -hmm. and companies are pretty much, yeah, they're mm -hmm. going to do the same types of tax returns, mm -hmm. which is your provisional tax. Mm -hmm. So whether you're doing it as a sole proprietor, which is your freelancer mm -hmm. route, or you're doing it under a, a company, registered company mm -hmm. then you're going to have those three tax returns twice a year mm -hmm. two of the three tax returns them are going to be the provisional and provisional mm -hmm. is just i'm i'm assuming i'm going to make this much coming going forward yes. and i think that it will create this much tax let me pay mm -hmm. half of it now mm -hmm. so that i don't have to pay the full amount no. come to bed. Yes. so okay. that's the same thing with companies mm -hmm. okay so the next one it's a bit of a biased question but what are the advantages of a tax practitioner yeah <laughs> I think it's really about specific knowledge. Mm -hmm. I deal a lot with tax recovery mm -hmm. and tax audits mm -hmm. um, because people just didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's okay. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we study for it. We, we really get specialized to be able to have those answers. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to see if you Google this tax rate, if mm -hmm. it applies. Mm -hmm. So you might have this kind of fast knowledge or general mm -hmm. knowledge, mm -hmm. even ha know the tax rates, mm -hmm. but if you don't know how to... How to utilize them properly, then yeah. it's, you know, it's, so it's our It's our bread and butter. It's what we do. We, we look at a situation mm -hmm. and people think it's numbers, but it's actually... I like to More think of it, it as art. I oh, like okay. it's, <laughs> trying to like, Yeah, you're trying to make, create something that, yes. that works, you know, and okay. you're trying to create a system or a strategy or you're trying to be like an mm -hmm. architect. Mm -hmm. and create something that works mm -hmm. um, and so and it's going to be yeah. unique for each and every person exactly and that's that's mm -hmm. the ability to take the knowledge that you know and really figure out who does it apply to mm -hmm. and how does it best how can you get the best for them okay. um, so recently i posted something on tiktok and there's been a bit of complaints around tax practitioners so how do you verify that this person is knowledgeable in that area so i don't know if they the people that are complaining have like a uh, personal experience because they're just mm -hmm. like oh I've, I've had um, or I know that some tax practitioner will actually get you more into trouble uh, text wise than they actually help you in that situation mm. so how would you yeah. advise someone to go about um, ensuring that the tax practitioner they are going with knows mm. their stuff and will hopefully get them the you know the right Best. tax rebates yeah. and yeah tax a healthy tax life basically that's a good one. I think we experience that with all services mm -hmm. where you bad have service providers. bad service providers. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, we lead with empowering with information. Mm -hmm. So my entire ethos in life is always to have at least a basic amount mm -hmm. of information yes. so that I know what I'm doing. And also what I pride ourselves in, in, in our firm is that you know what we're submitting and how mm -hmm. much we're submitting and we hope that you understand we sit so that the person understands what's mm -hmm. happening another thing is that they have autonomy over 
their profiles. Mm -hmm. So we don't keep it on our staff's profile, our practitioner profile. Mm -hmm. We keep it on the person's profile so that they're able to get second, third opinions. And we also encourage that. Mm -hmm. So if you're still not getting it or you're still unsure, mm -hmm. I don't want to convince you. I mm -hmm. want you to get to be knowledgeable and find that out. So if it means that you do your own research based off of the information that we've given you, or you speak to another tax practitioner, mm -hmm. get a second, third opinion, just like you would with a doctor. That's absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's no attack on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's really about doing as much homework as you can, or at least making sure that when someone is doing something that is your responsibility, because ultimately it is, mm -hmm. that you understand what that what is going on and you don't yeah. just kind of go i've mm, given it to I've somebody it to, yeah which is great if you trust so, them but yeah it's so good. important what you just mentioned right now to be responsible for your own taxes financially mm -hmm. actually there's no financial topic that you can just assign to a professional and say that oh my uh, my investment manager will like handle my investment yeah like you need to understand what they are doing how are they handling your investments how are they handling your savings just your financial life all in all needs to be something that you have one or two um, ideas as to what is happening. Otherwise, mm. yeah, <laughs> you're going to regret a lot of it in the future. So it's very important. What is the reasonable amount to pay for a tax practitioner? Or it depends on what type of services you need or want and so forth. And yeah, obviously they are business and they can charge anything that they want to. But what could you say is maybe a reasonable amount to consider or to say, okay, maybe I need to budget this amount for this type of tax uh, return. How would you like maybe classify that or how would you uh, basically advise someone to say, okay, this is a bit too much, this is okay, and this maybe you might be worried as to whether or not they will do that job. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tricky. I think the mm -hmm. only thing I can speak of is if something is too discounted. Mm -hmm. I can't speak too much about um the price of if it goes up because accounting work can get quite specialized mm -hmm. so if i say well a tax return should never be more than x amount mm -hmm. i don't know because sometimes people can have like six different things going on mm -hmm. with their tax return mm -hmm. but i can say that the it's never been a good idea for someone to just um you know have something that even if you think about it it's ridiculously cheap mm -hmm. because in my experience uh, most people who come over to me come over to me from accountants who charge too little mm -hmm. in my opinion and what ends up happening is they have so much work because mm -hmm. you're a service-based business mm -hmm. so you don't get the attention and care the rule of thumb is the less you pay the less attention you're going to get mm -hmm. so if you're happy with that level of attention or you're doing a hybrid thing where you are doing some of the work and making it easier for the accountant, that's mm -hmm. fine. But if you are paying like 400 rand for a tax return mm -hmm. and <laughs> you're going to pay for it. I mean, that's, that's what happened to one of my biggest refund clients. I had, had to get him back about half a million of overpaid taxes. Mm -hmm. And he, he was really complaining about my fees. I said, my fees are even like less than what less I'm going to be able to get back way less mm -hmm. because what has happened is that you haven't paid for the right thing mm -hmm. so you've ended up paying too much for the wrong thing so you've mm -hmm. paid so much in taxes so you're going to pay somewhere so the lack of knowledge will give you some sort of deficit somewhere mm -hmm. and the quality of information comes at a cost because it takes a lot for someone to acquire that cost you know mm -hmm. or to invest in their credibility yes um so i mean i was like this this is ridiculous i would <laughs> never charge you this much and he fought with me and yes. and then ultimately he saw that oh okay well and he just this week he got another chunk back over like sixty thousand rand mm -hmm. from overpay taxes but mm -hmm. if i'm gonna have to go back and redo work it's going to have to come at a cost so yes. yeah i think um, what I always say with my clients, though, uh, is that I don't want this to be a lose win lose situation mm -hmm. or a lose lose situation. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to try and charge you into nothing. I'll just say that, okay, if this is too much and that is your budget, this is the reasonable amount of work, the work that I can, that do. I can do. So it's for this. based on the scope of work, basically, you just define your scope of work and say, yes. according to your budget. This is how much I can get to. You can continue the work with someone else if yes. you want to. But uh, this, this is, is what we can do. So yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah, I never wanted to be a, a win-lose situation, or we never 
pride ourselves on being mm -hmm. um, expensive, you mm -hmm. know, type of thing. It's just that if I'm going to do a specific type of work, um, the time it's going to take, I'm never going to get it back and mm -hmm. I need to do it properly. Mm -hmm. So then my team requires resources, I require resources, and we just can't underprice. It's yes. just even if, you know, you whoever it, it is, I just like, I. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself yeah. as well. I guess to fellow, uh, fellow colleagues that are text practitioners, that yeah. will be the advisor as well to say, rather price your worth, basically. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And would you say that with services such as text team, um, do those work as good as a text practitioner or maybe, as you said, that those ones that are starting out or it depends on your text knowledge. Can you use services such as that? Or? Yeah, I actually would flip it. So text mm -hmm. is great for educational content. Mm -hmm. um, what I would not suggest to someone who doesn't have good knowledge on tax mm -hmm. or at least understands a little bit about their e-filing profile, about their tax rates, to do that because um, it's, again, you pay for the amount of attention you get. Mm -hmm. So then if I, I will charge enough, basically nothing if I don't have to put that much effort into it, right? If you just have to go on my website and fill in a form and I, it will take me five minutes because you've basically done all the work for me. But if you don't know what you're doing, um, what will happen is you're going to get a shot. I've had a few clients come and they're great, again, for educating. But in terms of the actual filing, if you don't have a baseline of how your tax, taxes should work, mm -hmm. then you probably want to start off with a personal um, approach have a consultation from from there and then maybe to have a little bit more hands off mm -hmm. but and then how do you prepare your text documents how do you make sure that um, all your documents are ready for the tax season I think one thing that I've learned in my previous tax years that uh, if you are getting additional income you need to keep invoices of almost everything mm -hmm. so like things like that um, but as you say that we need to consult at the beginning of the year but mm -hmm. how how does one after not having done that whole preparation make sure that they have all their tax documents ready for the tax season mm -hmm. um, again the consultation is super important because you need to know which tax types you're filing for and then which documents you are actually preparing at the end of the year so for instance are you doing financial statements if financial statements are being done it has to be done by an accountant it has to be signed off mm -hmm. so we would need certain information for the most part bank statements work adequately well um, and that's usually there but in terms of different types of if you're claiming especially for employee employees or things like that where you're claiming mm -hmm home office expenses and stuff like that, we need to have those invoices. But again, for the most part, you can go back to the store if need be and like get the, that information if SARS okay. specifically asks for those invoices. Um, but if you, another thing is if you're spending a lot of cash. So if you were drawing a lot, mm -hmm. that's where invoices become literally Very every, important everything. Again. But for, Absolutely. you know, if things are there on your bank statement or you're withdrawing or, I mean, or you're swiping or you're using your card, it makes life much easier because you can just categorize it like that. Okay. And then any last remarks and also can you please drop your social media handles so that everybody can be able to follow you and know where to find you. Awesome. So last remarks, just make sure that you take care of your taxes because mm -hmm. it's getting increasingly more um, strict and it can also threaten the life that you're building, things like your assets, your homes that you're building, um, your legacy, your children. And so feel free to book a consultation. You can go through to my website, which is www.lordbusiness.solutions, L-O-R-D-E. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find this link in my bio on my social media handles, which is Tax with Tash on Instagram and TikTok, where I share information that can help you guys. And then also I am on LinkedIn with mm -hmm. Natasha Lord. We've got a bunch of resources on the website. We've got blog posts. Um, we've got a lot of free content out there as well on YouTube, Natasha Lord. So you can go and explore all of that. So that is the end of it, guys. I hope by now, if you're a freelancer or you have a company or you're someone that's pursuing side hustles, 
you have a better idea of what to do and where to go in order to make sure that your tax life is healthy uh, because it's so important none of us want to end up with that 35 million rent fine from SARS because hey that's hectic you know <laughs> so thank you very much for coming oh God, I thank you that you've given us wisdom and minds to understand and to preserve ourselves I thank you Lord that you are constantly with us and that you are always placing us around the right people and that you're always opening up our mind and our capacity to do well and to thrive that when you say that we are to have life and life abundantly that you really have given us um, an appetite for your goodness and your greatness um, and that we may be able to live that out I thank you that you will also give us freedom from any sorts of fears um, and that you will just cover us with your love as we make decisions through this life that give you glory and build your kingdom Amen mm -hmm.